Happy Friday evening, everybody. Welcome to, I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say Chair League's Game of the Week, the last two undefeated pro division teams in Chair League, Team Blaze and Brawls Deep. Very excited to cast this one. Mitchell, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing really well. Very excited for this match tonight. As am I. We are just waiting for uh, teams to filter in, so I think it's going to be a minute or two. Uh, for those not familiar with uh, Pro Division, it will be a best of three, so we will get at least two games to watch, possibly a third, and with these two teams, I don't think it would be a surprise if we went to a third game. give you a little background on these teams. Our home team today is Team Blaze. They are 4-0 in their first season of Chair League. Of course, they have professional Heroes of the Storm aspirations. And their opponent today is Brawls Deep. Brawls Deep, this is their second season in Chair League. In their first season, last season, they were the Pro Division champions and they went undefeated 12-0. They are currently 14-0, and they have never lost a chair league game. In fact, 13 of their 16 games have been 2-0 in best of three. So I think dominant would be an understatement. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds pretty dominant performance. So we are just created the draft lobby. Uh, T er, I'm sorry, Brawls Deep has selected Cursed Hollow as the map in the first game, and that means Team Blaze will take first pick when we get the uh, draft started. Um, I apologize for the lack of video, because as soon as I sat down to get casting this game, my camera, of course, didn't work for the first time ever. It has not worked. Um, so we're going audio only today. Uh, those of you, hey Matt, how's it going? Those of you in the chat room, please let me know if our volume is okay so we can adjust accordingly. You gotta love technology problems. They always come out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, especially when uh, uh, when you have, you know, probably the biggest cast you've ever done coming up in 10 minutes. Yeah, there's never a perfect time, like crunch time, for things to go wrong. That is correct. And then, of course, we've been really slow at work all week. I'm getting it right at 5 until today. Um, when I got caught up till 5.30 and had to drive very unsafely to get home here home in time. So we do have uh, Blaze trickling into the lobby. Um, of course, uh, Oddish uh, on Blaze. I had the pleasure of casting her a couple times last season when she was on uh, Sweet Synergy before joining Team Blaze. And uh, Blaze has been very good. They are very creative in their um, drafts sometimes, so uh, always fun to see uh, what they decide to break out. There we go. Now we have all of Team Blaze in here, and we will, of course, get... Where it is? Well, um, apparently, I don't know where Brawl's Deep went. They're not in the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, wrong screen. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. think of the skins they announced today oh I'm, I'm i'm very excited for that spooky scary zool skin that just made me so happy i don't know why i never put those two together but it's such a perfect match having him be a scarecrow and raising i don't know if you saw the little skeletons but they're all in costumes i did some of them look like yep. zombies some of them have masks on it's very That's a good. great great little addition bala has some synergy with the martial rainers uh skin that's already of course in the game And the and Kalthos finally getting a good skin. <laughs> I guess his other one's kind of lame, uh, in my opinion. He looks a little bit like uh, like Green Goblin from uh, Spider-Man. 
a lot of people were saying he looks like an actual, an old Blizzard uh, rock and roll racing character before they were actually known as Blizzard, that uh, I had never heard of, but I read about it in the uh, in the Reddit chat today. Yeah, I saw that too. That it looks like one of the rock and roll racing uh, characters. So that's a nice little throwback there. Yeah, he's. I still think he. I bet you one of the tents will be a, like a, a green goblin or like skin, because you could totally see that with the little kind of goblin-looking bomb things that he throws. All right, I am going to put the observer link in the lobby so you can see that in a second, Mitchell. And uh, both teams almost here. And I bet you we will have a draft going in just a minute. Thank you, Oddish, for the host. Always nice to have your fans join us. Uh, welcome back, Oddish's peeps, to my stream. Was fortunate enough to have you folks in here a couple times last season for some sweet synergy games. Just waiting for one more member of Brawl's Deep. All right, I am sending out the draft links right now. So we should be going momentarily. Draft link sent out. We're still waiting for one more, I believe, from Brawl's Deep. Because they're only sporting four. I don't think they're going to play with a bot. So I imagine we're going to get one more coming in here. Cursed Hollow. Probably the most traditional MOBA-esque map in Heroes, I would say. I don't think that's a stretch. Probably not, no. Mobility, of course, um, and globals. Excellent on any map. Uh, this map, you have to fight over the three tributes to get the curse, which uh, makes the minions only have one hit point and takes away the defensive power of the structures. He's fixing his mouse. <laughs> so one of them's having technical difficulties, as I am, which is not good for him, but does make me feel better. There we go. Of course, we would be waiting on somebody called Crunk Juice. <laughs> All right. So they are out. Mitchell, if you're on the uh, draft link screen, let me know if anybody gets yes. going. Perfect. Mitchell, turn yourself up a little bit. Let me see if I can also turn you up. You do that first. You are at full volume from my end. Wait a minute, I lied. Okay. I knew it. Let me know how that is, Matt, if, that, if testing, that's better. Testing, testing, All right, just waiting for Brawls Deep to ready up. And we will have our first draft in this best of three ready to go. Definitely the uh, biggest game I've ever casted. I'm really excited about this. Um, big fan of um, Team Blaze and Brawls Deep when I've watched them in Cherry Lake. They're always a lot of fun to watch, a really good team. So this should be a really fun matchup. Team Blaze on the clock for their first ban. Right now, um, generally Zarya and uh, Malfurion dominating the win rates right now in uh, Hero League. They are the top bands. Hero League, of course, not the same thing as organized competitive play, though. No, it, not even close. I mean, the things that you and I would say were uh, priorities uh, definitely don't come close to the priorities for a lot of these teams up here. And not only that, on two fairly high-profile teams like this, um, there's targeted um, 
targeted bands. They know what the other one does. Murky is, I'm sure, Zarya. Yes. And oh, Nova, is, Nova is banned, by the way, because of her bug. Oh, she's got a bug. She I does have a bug this. on her W, yep, which is probably part of the reason I've been having so much fun on her lately. I didn't realize it either. But her, um, my understanding of it is her level one talent for the uh, pinning shot that does the increase slow, depending on how long she's been cloaked, is always maxed out, basically. Wow, okay. Yeah. So uh, Jova opted to ban her uh, in Chair League until they fix that. So Nova is banned. All right, good decision. Not that Murky's going to be picked, but for that reason, Nova... Um, <laughs> Nova may have been that. Oh, maybe they have her grayed out. I think they have her grayed out, so they can't pick her anyway. Brawls Deep on the clock for the first pick. I wonder if they realize we're going because they're already into their time pool. Yeah, they've already eaten almost or over half of it. Yep. I hope they realize that. There we go. Li Ming banned from Brawls Deep, which does leave Malfurion on the board, and there he is. He is definitely really good right now. I finally broke down and played him for the first time. I was holding off, figuring as soon as I got good on him again. Uh, yes, Murky is Zarya. As soon as I got good on Malfurion again is when they would nerf him. Turns out he's really good. Uh, so not a surprising first pick by Team Blaze, especially in the narrow corridors that you tend to fight in on Cursed Hollow. Uh, his root is about the size of those corridors. Yeah, it's not surprising to see some of these high win rate heroes being picked early. Um, there's a reason they have those win rates, of course. And it's um, he is a very impactful hero right now. He can really change a lot of, of things, um, turn around a lot of fights. He can get those sweet roots to start off some uh, stun synergy to get picks and, and things like that. So he's just a, in a really, really, really strong place right now. Plus the cooldown reduction um, on his innervate is is highly, highly valued right now. And with TC and Fala are gonna round off the picks here for Brawl's Deep. Yeah, and with the uh, five second cooldown on his heal, he can pretty much spam it. Vala, very highly valued in NA Competitive. When you see the recent uh, pros put out their tier list, she's very high on it. And ETC is just a solid tank always. So. Two very kind of traditional strong picks by, by Brawls Deep, not really showing their hand at all. Both of those heroes can go into multiple comps. Welcome to the lobby, Jova, by the way. And Muradin picked up by Team Blaze, also traditionally one of the very strong picks, and very similar to the selections from Brawls Deep, not showing their hand. Both teams very traditional right now, not showing anything unusual or pocket picks of anything, anything of that nature, nothing shown so far. Shoutouts to Jova in the chat right now. Thrall is going to be the last pickup here for Team Blaze. I really like Thrall. He's just a great hero. He's got a great amount of poke. Um, he's got a great kit that allows him to be really versatile, and his his ultimates are really impactful on the battlefield as well. Yeah, you tend to see Sundering and Competitive, but both of them are good. Um, He's also probably one of the top two or three heroes who can solo a lane. And Alarak banned by Brawl's Deep. Many of the pros saying in reddits and stuff that they think he's the best melee assassin in heroes right now. So that's not surprising. His silence can really, really do work when paired up with that telekinesis. He's also got a really, really strong basic attack as well, which, which people tend to gloss over. I mean, it's it's easy to, to see a lot of characters like... Uh, uh, you know, the Butcher, for example, is being a really strong auto attacker, but Alarak puts out some serious damage. He's able to reposition a lot, and they've already got three lockdown on the side of Blaze, so that's they, they want to take that out of the equation as well. Um, and if they're going for maybe more of a backline team, uh, with that deadly charge that he can just get in there and wreak havoc on, on a lot of teams' positioning, maybe they wanted to count that out as well. We're seeing a Tassadar ban here on the side of Team Blaze. Maybe they wanted to stop them from going uh, double support with the Tassadar being kind of a shield slave for either a Vala or another uh, frontliner like a Sonya or Kerrigan or something like that. Um, he can really enable a lot of people. Um, and the site as well that he gets access to is really good on uh, Cursed Hollow because you do have a lot of blind spots that you can go to. So we're seeing Medivh and Oriel picked up by Brawl Steve. This makes me so excited right now. Uh, we have yet to cast a game with Medivh in it. And this makes me really excited for the possibilities of 
what they're going to be able to pull out. Yeah, this is Brawl's Deep finally showing their hand a little bit. Now, Ariel's weakness as a support character, she doesn't have a cleanse, and there's a lot of hard CC on the side of Team Blaze right now. And Oddish is on Team Blaze. She wrote the book on Chromie, so you always have to keep that in the back of your head as a pocket pick from Team Blaze, especially with all the hard CC we have here. So it's something just to kind of keep in mind. You never know. She's, I said, absolutely wrote the book on Chromie. I'm very curious to see how Team Blaze responds. We're going to see two backline damage dealers here, I would guess. And I think maybe that Tassadar ban might have been targeted. Like I said, these two teams have a lot of information out there on each other. So I'm sure they've done their homework. The Tassadar could have been a targeted ban as well. Okay, so we've got some correction here from the chat lobby. Um, Medivh was not our pick for tonight for Team Blaze. Uh, the user interface bugged out and it's supposed to be Tyrael. So we got a double angel comp over there on the side of Brawl's Deep. That should be Vala, ETC, Tyrael, and Ario. As Asmodan and Gazlo round out the last two picks here for Team Blaze. I, I hope. I said going in that Blaze does some creative things in draft. We've seen it before, and now we have a Gazlo, Asmodan on Cursed Hollow. That would certainly qualify for creative. Let's go ahead and get into the draft and make sure... Oh, okay, so we might be redrafting. I was that would be very creative. Okay, we are yep, indeed redrafting. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> that would have been I almost want to say, well, no, no, let's just go ahead and, and go. It'll be it'll be good times. Good times. Okay, so we're gonna get another observer here, probably. Uh yes, we will be. Team one on the left will be Team Blaze, Earth Blaze, Blaze, and Team Two. Oh, they're going for Storm Draft, so if they're oh. starting one. Oh, okay, great. Then we can just wait for the yeah. legs. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm still doing it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do Top Drafter. I've already got it going. First pick is team one. We are on Cursed Hollow. Boom. Okay. Nope. Oh my goodness. I would have. I would have liked to have seen these two teams play that game um, because that would have been fun. Would have seen an Artanis and an Asmodan. Okay, so we we do we do have a uh, so we do have a link here for Stormcraft. Oh, Jova is telling me redraft is a caster feature, is it? Hmm, I do not see that. Oh, restart draft. Yes, it is, Jova. That, um, that's why it's a good thing you keep an eye on stuff. Make sure everything runs smoothly. All right. So I have it here. Here's the away team. Do, 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 do. Okay, so they're restarting the draft over here. Oh, do they have it going already? Yeah, they have oh, okay. it going already. I'm That's fine. This link right I, got, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. I got it, I got it. Yeah, I just... they're, re they're pretty much repicking everything up until the, uh, the missed picks, I think. Great, let's see um, how this looks on my... Because my thing is not set up for it, so I'm going to have to change it to this. <laughs> oh my goodness. So they did first ban Zarya. Uh, I don't know about you, but the picture didn't show up for me. Uh, no, that's sometimes you have that happen on a newer thing here. All right, let's see. All right. Add screen capture. This. Oh, 
Okay, now hopefully everybody should be able to see it because uh, my original one was set up for Top Drafter, but uh, we're gonna roll up the punches here and it looks like the timing will be almost perfect because they're just about caught up. Quite an adventure we're having here in uh, <laughs> this game. It's already interesting, and we haven't even got to the game yet. All right, so it looks like they're just about caught up. Brawl's Deep is just about to select both of the angels. There's the Tyrael. Yeah, there. Okay, so they are. Here's the still Aria. Go for the same picks that they had. Perfect. Last time. Okay, okay, so, so now, now we're going to resume. We're right. Start to see. The original part of the draft, uh, I guess they didn't want to give away their last two picks there. I'm still um, predicting a Gazlo Asmodan. <laughs> a Gazmodan wouldn't be a bad pick, I don't think. I, ju I just want to see it. <laughs> well, from them, yeah, I, w I would love to see that. I have faith, Team Blaze. I think you could do a Gazlo Asmodan right here. And we do have a Tychus. I was listening to Town Hall Heroes, both Bakery and Dunk Train say Tychus, best assassin in the game right now. So not surprising, he does a ton of damage, melts the double front line that they currently have in the form of Tyrael and ETC. His ability to put out so much damage is, just makes him so valuable. I mean, it, you have characters that dive like the uh, ETC a little bit and the Tyrael to try to space for the back line there. And he's just going to be able to rip them to shreds. And last pick for Team Blaze, I would imagine another range damage dealer. Not calling the Chromie, but I'm saying don't be surprised. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Who else would we have? Lunara also has a lot of poke, does a lot of damage. And Falstad was going to be the next words out of my mouth. His damage has been nerfed down to where he doesn't do a ton of damage. It's still respectable, but... Mighty Gust is an absolute playmaker. He can fly all over this map, enable a little bit of extra split soak before joining the tributes. An excellent fifth pick by Team Blaze, I think. Yeah, he may not be a top damage dealer anymore, but I mean, he's one of the most versatile assassins that we have in the game, and there's just no discounting the ability to be global on a map like this, and the, the get out of jail free card, quote unquote, that is, uh, that gust is is a really powerful player making tool and a and a hard counter to mosh pit of course uh the other thing they were saying in town halls here both duncan bakery said they think stage dive on etc should now be the default go-to that mosh is more situational with the changes to etc's power slide i thought that was an interesting observation by both of those guys yeah he can get out of a lot of situations a lot easier now um so i mean it's it, it, lunara is going to be the last pickup I like that pick. Another strong uh, poker, another strong backline damage dealer, um, who can put, do who synergizes really well with Oriel's trait. Um, she fills up that hope bar with her poison really, really, really well. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who won that draft because both of these teams are way better than I am at this game. And when you have two teams as good as these ones are, it's going to come down to which one plays better, of course. they Both of them have solid drafts. Both of them fairly traditional with two melee frontliners and then the ranged backliners. So nothing too creative or cheesy or um, unique. Very straightforward, more traditional style comps from both squads. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I would go out on any limbs here and, and, and make any definitive statements about the performance that we're going to see from either one of these teams, other than it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can tell you that for sure. Now, I will say Team Blaze has a little bit more in the way of hard CC. If you get the Muradin stun with the Thrall root and the Mouth root with the amount of damage you're going to get, that could certainly lead to a um, a pick. So there, there is that there. Ikus on Tykes. Tykus, yeah. Uh, Oddish could be by on Tykus. Uh, that would be my guess as well. She's a pretty versatile player. I've seen her play all kinds of different heroes, but my guess would she is is that she's going to be on Tychus. All right, waiting for two more players to ready up here, and then we will get this show on the road. 
Welcome to anybody just joining us. We have our Monday night football version of Chair League here with the last two undefeated teams in Pro League. But does she know the drill? But in, in Team Blaze, 4-0 and Brawls Deep, undefeated in their entire Chair League career, 16-0 since they came in Chair League. Maybe their biggest challenge in Team Blaze, we will see, should be a lot of fun either way. Yeah, I mean, two undefeated teams at, at this level. Both of them have to have something strong going for them. I uh, really do like the double front line on the side of Brawl's Deep. But uh, every time I think that, you know, the Tychus comes out of there and just chews those front liners down. And we do have Oddish on Tychus, they were asking. And Tyrael ETC on the front line, not quite as beefy as you could have, because neither one of them are huge health pool heroes, but a lot of control on the front line. A lot of control, especially after Tyrael gets holy ground at level 16. Yeah, they're going to be able to push out really far for the rest of their team to be able to get that back line to, to be able to, to, to take advantage of their positioning and do a lot of damage. All right, on to the red team today is Brawls Deep. We have Nailiter on Ariel, FC Ignition on Tyrael, Crunk Juice on ETC, hopefully with a fixed mouse, Specialty on Lunara, and Tiger on Vala. You guys already know who it is on home team, Team Blaze. We're going to have uh, Snarly Brown on Malfurion, Oddish on Tychus, Stoughton on Falstad, Aunt Jemima on Thrall, and Vestige on Murden. Looks like both teams are going to the mid lane to do the traditional eSports 5-on-5 five -five skirmish. I would give Team Blaze a slight CC advantage in this, but with ETC there, you know, kind of negates that he's so good at isolating out of target. All they need is that one good center route to convert uh, on anybody right now. But both of these teams just kind of positioning here, going back and forth, trying to feel the other one out to see if anybody is going to uh, overextend. We got our first pause here, 20 seconds into the game. Huge lag. No problem. Both teams letting their computers catch up. I will say, Team Bla or I'm sorry, Brawls Deep. Oh, my mistake. I'm sorry. I apologize. There we go. You will see the game now. You will notice that Lunara has already rotated away. Brawls Deep looks like they're uh, not really dedicating themselves to this little five-on-five -five skirmish. My mistake, guys. You'll see it pop up. And I will say, uh, we didn't talk about it, but the lunara Ariel synergy is very, very real. Both of those heroes go together very, very well with uh, Lunara powering up Ariel's energy. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit untraditional here. We're going to remake this lobby here. A lot of these teams oh. um, are over on the East Coast side. All right. So if you're just catching up, we are apparently restarting all the way. We are having all kinds of technical difficulties here. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us through the draft snafus and the lag snafus and the caster snafus but it looks like we are sorting it out All right, we are now re, 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 restarting. And uh, I have got a good feeling about this one, Mitchell. I think this one's going to go well. You know, the more tries that we do, the, the better of a chance it has to finally work. And I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say it's going to definitely go better than the first try. And it helped, of course, that this time I had the game up instead of the draft screen because I do this. Okay. Now we're in Central, we're not on the Western servers anymore, so this should be a little bit easier for some of these players. Great. 
Now we can definitely get this show on the road. Both teams gathering, of course, for round two of our five-on-five eSports -five e skirmish in the mid lane of this map. You know, uh, they recently started, they being Blizzard, these little two-man or two-hero synergy kind of focuses. One of them was Lunara Ariel, but both heroes go together very well. And uh, Ariel, maybe top-tier hero in the, or top-tier hero healer in the game right now. And uh, Brawl's Deep already not even going into this five-on-five. Five. Three members are bottom, those three members being the two Angels and Lunara. Thrall has broken off to go bottom by himself. Needs to be very careful because he's by himself. He should be okay. Gets a little whip for his trouble. Aunt Jemima down in the bottom lane. And now both teams breaking off to their lane assignments. Muradin coming down bottom to help Thrall. 3v2 in favor of Brawl's Deep right now. Team Blaze will slowly lose this lane. We have Tychus and Vala fighting each other in the mid lane and a 2v1 with Falstad and Malfurion battling ETC in the top. That is, of course, a battle that ETC will slowly lose. So we have Brawl's Deep slowly winning the bottom lane. We have Team Blaze going to win the top lane. And I imagine Vala and Tychus will probably cancel each other out, although Oddish 1v1s Tiger and Vala goes down for first blood of the game exactly what you were talking about she does so well on that Tychus that was just beautiful to watch I don't know if you were focusing on it the whole time but that was a beautiful 1v1 I was not I came down just in time to catch it now we have a 3v2 and down goes Ariel Muradin is very close the storm bolt and the dwarf toss to get away from a pursuing Lunara and now Lunara is on the run from Aunt Jemina on Thrall taking a ton of poke damage and a root but both sides will disengage and return to their lanes early statement here from team late blaze getting both of the game's first kills and we're getting very close to the Merc camp spawning and I imagine in about five seconds you'll see these teams break off to capture their respective giant camps you know, something that I love watching about pro teams like this is the respect that they have for one, in, for one another. A lot of these teams make decisions that you or I would never make in a million years, like abandoning mid lane, for example, just to go deal with each other. Um, it's just a really smart, it, it's really fun to watch the game played in a, in a almost completely different environment. Uh, there is definitely a delay on the stream. Um, once again, Vala showing the weakness as a hero is that she is so fragile. She took a lot of damage there and was forced to hearth back. So it will be interesting to see if Vala can uh, stay in these battles because so far she's been taking a ton of damage. Neither team, I'm sorry, I apologize. Brawl's Deep captured their giants, whereas Team Blaze did not. And the tribute will be in the bottom lane, which works out much better for Team Blaze because they don't have to split to deal with uh, giants in the opposite lane. Brawl's Deep a little bit late to the party, ETC not quite here yet, while all members of Team Blaze are. Muradin taking a ton of damage, getting the heals, and Oddish getting very low, backing out on the Tychus. The root goes out on <clears throat> Tyrael, and Team Blaze's health bars are very low. Thrall goes down, Muradin goes down, Blaze in full retreat. First tribute will go to Brawl's Deep, responding to the early team early kills from Blaze, picking up two kills of their own. A little bit of a split engagement there. It seemed like some members were on one side of that battlefield and, and other members uh, were kind of late to that a little bit. But even so, uh, Brawl Steep was still able to pull that out. Yeah, and that really showed the, how well ETC can isolate a target out because that that's what landed the finishing blows on. I'm pretty sure that was uh, Muradin who was isolated by the ETC. Okay, gonna have three members of both teams stay down here in the bottom. Vala is dealing with Falstead in the mid, and ETC and Thrall are battling it out in the top. Oddish taking a lot of poke damage from Lunara, forced to retreat. Malfurion puts the heals on him. You can see how well Lunara and Ariel synergize together. They are both staying in lane, and they are slowly winning this three-on-three -three just because Ariel can put out such high heals with the high damage of specialty on Lunara, and they are able to pick off Oddish on Tychus. Second tribute appears on 
Team Blaze's side of the map in the bottom lane. You wonder if they're going to stall and wait for Tychus or just give it up. And it looks like with Thrall staying on the top lane so far, they're going to wisely not contest this tribute. Second tribute of the game also goes to Brawl's Deep. Yeah, they, they are missing out on just a little bit of soak here, uh, so they, they probably want to uh, to try to, to make up that difference now so that they can be on pretty even footing and get to eight not too far long after Brawl's Deep does here. Yeah, Brawl's Deep with the one extra kill is about, I would say, a quarter level ahead. Um, not too much, and they have taken out the bottom lane wall, and now we have a three-on-three three once again continued three-on-three three skirmishes, and the poke from Lunara and the heals from Ariel is just too much. Thrall was rotated on in the top lane in the meantime and was killed by ETC and Vala, and Muradin goes down again. That is the fifth kill for Brawl's Deep. After a, a tiny little hiccup in the beginning, they have really settled down and taken control in the last minute or so of this game, and I think they're going to get the early curse. With Muradin down right now, they're not going to be able to contest a tribute on Brawl's Deep's side of the map. Brawl's Deep has definitely made a statement in this game so far, trying to be the more aggressive one here, trying to look for more picks, trying to, to open up those opportunities for themselves. Uh, that was a beautiful detainment strike right into the fort that they were defending to stun the Murden to get the pick on him. And I mean, you exactly what you were talking about, the sustain that exists there with uh, Lunariel, I guess you could call him. It, it, it keeps up the Tyrael, it keeps up the uh, Lunara to be able to poke out um, as, as, for as long as possible. And it's just been uh, uh, swinging a little bit more into Team Brawl's, uh, Brawl's Deep's uh, uh, side of the game here. And this is an, a, a clinic on how to do the first curse. They are soaking every lane with a three-man push in mid. Team Blaze being very aggressive on the defense despite the fact they're down in level and don't have their ultimates yet. Speaking of heroics, we will go over Brawl's deep selections here. We have Sanctification on Tyrael. We have Stage Dive, like I discussed before the game on ETC. Uh, Leaping Strike on Lunara. A, uh, Crystal Aegis on Ariel and Reign of Vengeance on Vala. Uh, on the other side, uh, Malfurion's going to pick up Twilight Dream. Tychus is going to pick up the Laser Drill. Thrall's going to pick up Sundering. Falstad's going to pick up Mighty Gust. And Muradin's going to go for Avatar. And this is a really good team play here by Brawl's Deep. They leave Tyrael in the mid lane to make as much noise as possible, keep track of two members while they started on the boss. Gust. Falstad gusts and barrel rolls in there. There's the sanctification from Tyrael. Brawl's Deep gets the boss anyway and picks up Falstad and Muradin for their troubles. Stage dive re-engagement from ETC, but he will be content to take their two kills. And now Brawl's Deep has a boss pushing down the bottom lane. Oddish is in a very tough spot here. Caught out on Tychus and she will be picked off on Team Brawl's, or Brawl's Deep's side of the map. Brawl's Deep now rotating down to Team Blaze's boss, but just ETC here by himself. I don't know if they were just checking or the rest of the team will join him here to get a second boss. It looks like a couple more members are going to start to rotate over there to maybe at least support the ETC in his decision, but I think that they're going to look to try to get that boss. Uh, that a uh, little skirmish over the boss at top exhibited one of the things that I, I learned not too long ago when I was trying to play Tyrael a lot, which is whoever has Tyrael on their side is usually going to steal the boss. And the sanctification is what makes all the difference. He just running in there, making everybody invulnerable. Um, for as many members as uh, Team Blaze jumped on that uh, boss to try and steal it as well, uh, it, it's just not going to work out when you have somebody who can have an area of effect uh, immortality like that. Yeah, you know, Falstad tried to use the gust to get it, but Team Blaze wasn't quite there in enough force to pull that off, and they ended up um, losing it. So all three of the level one forts down right now for Team Blaze. Uh, Brawl's Deep also is a talent tier up 13 to 12, and they have arrived in force and on time to the tribute, which is on Team Blaze's side of the map, and it looks like Blaze will once again give up the tribute. They have only been able to contest one tribute so far this game because of either deaths or, uh, in this case, a talent tier disadvantage. Yeah, that was not a fight that they wanted to take at all. 
you saw Falstead fly up pretty much almost immediately after that. They want to get the soak, they want to make up that levelly difference here, because they cannot fight a Talonteer down. Looks like Brawl's Deep with the Talonteer advantage is going to try to get the boss. You can see Team Blaze posturing around it. They make no move on it. Interior pop Sanctification just to be sure there will be no sneaky business from Team Blaze. Stage Dive on ETC isolates Oddish on Tyrael. I'm sorry, on uh, Tychus. The drill goes down but gets blown up. That was a very aggressive, very smart play from Crunk Juice on ETC to get Oddish who was just barely overextended. Yeah, he not only stunned her, but got in the way of her getting through that gate. It was That was just a magnificent uh, power slide. A defensive sundering from Aunt Jemima to keep himself alive. Team Blaze currently fighting to keep this fort, I'm sorry, keep this keep alive and stay in the game, but they are definitely on the back foot, and the bottom lane keep goes down. Boss still at about 30% of its health, uh, but Brawl's Deep will withdraw. Once again, Team Blaze is not going to be able to contest this tribute. Brawl's Deep knows it. They put a little damage on the front wall of the mid keep and then withdraw to the tribute, which has just spawned. You know, I just learned something about rotations there. That was really smart on the side of uh, Brawl's Deep to rotate a little bit more aggressively, even if there was a tower there to shoot at them. They wanted to get the dismounts as soon as possible for Team Blaze, and they didn't want them to be on their mounts from the moment that they got out of their safe zone, which allows them to get over to that side of the, the tribute that much easier. So that was really smart. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and when, when you're seeing playing with two teams that are as good as these two teams are, a 16 to 14 lead with a keep down, Brawl's Deep is probably going to have to make a mistake to allow Team Blaze to get back in this. Um, Team Blaze definitely at a disadvantage and uh, needs to maybe get a pick or uh, take advantage of a mistake by Brawl's Deep to get back in this game. Now ETC is in the top lane. Stage Dive, however, is off cooldown, so he can jump down here anytime his team needs him to. And they are, looks like they're going to try to take out the wall. Otis drops the drill laser, help clear out the Merc push. It uh, looks like they will get a tower and almost the gate. And Brawl's Deep content to do that and withdraw. <clears throat> ETC did hearth back after a little bit of a split push in the top lane. Once again, the tribute appearing on Brawl's Deep side of the map. It looks like Team Blaze knows they have to contest this one and they are on their way. So a... Team fight win for Brawl's Deep here could have him win the game. Muradin gets detainment striked into the wall. He dives in, eats a rain of vengeance. ETC is going to stage dive in. Crystal Aegis goes down, followed by the sanctification. Rain of vengeance takes out Thrall. Muradin falls shortly after. The Twilight Dream does silence three people, but so many members are down on Team Blaze, it's not going to matter. Malfurion is the only hero that gets out alive. Four members down from Team Blaze. The entirety of Brawl's Deep is alive, and with a curse, it looks like they're going to push for a keep. Um, you, ha you have to think that the ending the game is somewhere in the back of their mind. Yeah, they're going to the sidewall and straight to the keep. I'm sorry, to the core, trying to end this game. Snarly Brown running for his life. He does use the ice block, gets detainment strike anyway, and that will be game one of this probably going to Brawl's Deep. But with Muradin, Thrall, Tychus, and Falstad all coming up shortly, Brawl's Deep opts to go a little more conservative and take out this top keep on their way out. They wanted to stagger out those time deaths. You know, they they, they know that they have the uh, the ability to, to kind of retreat at their will because of these everything is uh, kind of defended for them here. Thrall's gonna go down to the Lunara, and so is uh, Tychus. Muradin's gonna be the next to be picked off. And if they can get, they're, they're gonna start to do work on this core right now. This is probably gonna be game right here. They wanted to, to pull out that other, that Team Blaze far enough from their core that they were able to get picks on them because Team Blaze, I think, got a little bit aggressive there with the chase. So the more kills, the more easier they, they can hit the core, and there, there they go. And they really took advantage of that curse there, moving freely all around Team Blaze's uh, base there without any fear of defensive structures firing away at them. You know, Team Blaze got the first two kills of the game, and look at the kill count, 2 to 17. After that, Brawl's Deep absolutely took control of the game, and uh, it showed they finished about, what, three levels up or so? 
and had 17 unanswered kills to end that off there. So well played by Brawls Deep, showing why they have not lost a chair league game yet. So now it is Team Blaze's choice on map, and we will find out uh, where they would like to play game two. What were your uh, takeaways from that first game? Uh, Ludariel is a killer. She, th those two combined, you were talking about them earlier in, in the game. I mean, those two combined just do so much work with each other. I, I, I really think that that early push advantage that they had helped them set up that level lead uh, pretty early on that they were able to not only capitalize on a lot of times during the game, but continue to grow as the game went on as well. So, and, and that had a lot to do with, with the, the two of them had a lot to do with getting that early push and some of those early picks there in that game. Um, they're saying the stream isn't delayed. It should definitely be delayed. Are you seeing a stream delay? Do you have it up, Mitchell? Uh, I do have it up here. Let me double check it. This is my latency is pretty low to you. It's like within 10 seconds. So maybe you want to extend that a little bit. All right, we can do that. In the meantime, let me know if they decide on a second map there. I don't know if that means you have to go down and then come back up in order for the stream delay to, uh, to fully initiate them. We will find out in a moment. Certainly not my favorite thing to do is do this during a game, not ideal. Looks like our second game is going to be on Infernal Shrines. Uh, both teams trickling into lobby right now. Let me get the draft links going.
Well, it looks like the uh, draft has got started. Brawls Deep first ban Bala. Team Blaze is on the clock for their second pick, or for their first ban, I should say, second ban of the game. Mitchell, while I mess with the stream delay, why don't you go ahead and call the draft for me? Okay. Let's see. Who had the first ban? Brawl's Deep had the first ban. Uh, that was going to be Vala. And then Team Blaze had the second ban. They wanted to ban out Sylvanas, and we are on Infernal Shrines tonight. Um, and... Oh, okay. So Murky is not the first pick for Brawl's Deep. It's actually Zarya. Um, not surprising to see on Infernal Shrines. Um, they... They, they probably uh, want to get some of these uh, high win rate heroes as well. We saw Malfurion being picked up, picked up first last game, so it's not surprising to see to see her uh, in this game. Oh, they can't watch the draft on the stream yet. Kerrigan going to be the first pickup uh, for Team Blaze on Infernal Shrines. Not surprising to see at all. This is probably her best map. Uh, Malfurion is going to be the second pickup for Infernal Shri uh, for Team Blaze. Another great pick, another solid pick, uh, especially for this map as well. Talk about tight corners that you can start to root people in. Um, that's really nice. Uh, yeah, they still can't see the draft. It, it should pop up. It should oh, pop okay. up. Yeah, I've already done it. That's why... The stream on what I'm watching is really delayed, so I'm not quite sure. Whatever. Okay, so uh, keep going while I figure this out. Yeah, sometimes they just need more of a delay in order to make it sanctioned. Tychus is going to be picked up by Brawls Deep, and ETC is going to be picked up by Brawls Deep as well. So they've got two tanks, and they've got a uh, damage dealer in the form of Tychus so far not surprised to see Tychus here he's he's pretty good on Infernal Shrines um, with his um, minigun it allows him to kill a lot of creeps is going to be the ban here for Team Blaze. Not surprising. They probably just don't want to deal with uh, the same Oriole that they dealt with last game. And Tyrael is going to be the ban for Brawl's Deep. Um, also, re Tyrael has really great synergy with Kerrigan. Um, Tyrael, I always say he needs a diving buddy, and I don't think that there's a more perfect diving buddy at the moment than Kerrigan. Um, shields on shields she can get her own she can get some to her supplied from the Tyrael um and Malfurion can be there to keep all of them alive and healthy so uh his reciprocate as well his talent dead I believe it's 13 um does really really well or sorry seven does really really well for um clearing out creeps and wave clear Johanna gonna be picked up by team blaze not surprising in the least bit, Johanna does a lot of damage to um, non-hero targets, and she's got that really nice big uh, pull-in condemn for people like the Kerrigan to follow up on. If she can stun somebody, there can be a Malfurion root under that pretty quickly, followed up by a Kerrigan combo. So just a great pick, uh, on not only on this map, but for the uh, for the composition as well. Yeah, they definitely respected the Ariel selection after that last game. She just, uh, especially in that bottom lane, we saw how, how much she kept her team up in those threes on threes. Blaze just kept getting pushed back and back and back uh, before level 10 in those three on three engagements in the bottom lane. And Tarant being picked up here by Team Blaze. Um, rounding out their picks with another uh, semi-support, um, but definitely an, uh, another piece of lockdown as well um, to follow up on anything that the um, 
that Kerrigan combo might be able to accomplish, or the Johanna stunt as well. Um, gives him sight, gives him uh, that ability to see around the map as well. So that that's uh, a, a good pickup for them. Li Ming being picked up for Brawl Steep, not one that you think about. Um, first and foremost on Infernal Shrines, but definitely a strong hero. The the changes to her orb made it actually a little bit easier for her to um, defend those points, so that's always good. And then Brightwing being picked up as the support here um, for Brawl's Deep. Not too crazy. She's a really popular healer right now, and everybody really likes her. Um, she can do a lot of healing to that backline that they've got. And you are going to be so happy, Brian. I see it. Chromie got picked up. Last pick for Team Blaze. <laughs> I do believe that's going to be Oddish on Chromie. And who doesn't love to watch that? Indeed. And with the Tyrande on this map uh, as a second support, she's going to go Starfall. That Starfall is pretty much the size of the shrine. So she's really good on this map. However, we will have to go offline here for probably about 30 seconds while I adjust the stream delay. We will be back in just one minute. So hang tight, everybody. We will be going again in just two seconds. <laughs> 